Graphics drivers on Linux are a perfect image of our Linux based systems. Yes, we do have all the graphics drivers that you want, but no, they don't work in the same way as they do on Windows. And yes, they are weird. So I thought we would start the new year with a little refresher and explainer on all these graphic drivers, how they work and which one you should turn to depending on your hardware. And I also thought we should start the new year with the segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and most of you probably already know about it. But if you don't, all you have to remember is that it's your all-in-one solution to build and publish your own website. Even if you don't know anything about how to build a website and you don't know how to code, Squarespace just lets you get started in no time. You pick a template, you drag and drop the various blocks you want, you customize them with the various colors and themes, and you're good to go. And when you want to move forward and enrich your website with a bunch of other features, you can add a video gallery, an online store with online payments, or even a members only area and a lot more. And if you need a logo or you need a domain name, Squarespace can also help you with that. So if you need a new website and you don't know how to get started, just click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, but first we do have to start with a very short explainer on how drivers in general work on Linux. Generally, drivers for Linux are baked right into the kernel. When you get a new Linux kernel, you get updates to the drivers at the same time. Everything is in there and in theory, you don't need to download and install anything else. Except that's not the case 100% of the time. Drivers can also be provided outside of the kernel for things that were not merged or approved or that cannot be added to the Linux kernel itself, either because of a licensing issue, as in they are not compatible with the GPL, or for other reasons. And that's why you can find drivers for Linux that you have to install yourself, for example, for Realtek, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi adapters, or for certain GPUs, or for certain exotic pieces of hardware. These drivers are provided as kernel modules that are loaded dynamically without needing to recompile a kernel with them. That's why you will also see something called DKMS, which is short for Dynamic Kernel Module Support. It's a tool that automatically rebuilds these kernel modules for you when your kernel gets an update. And if you absolutely need to install a driver manually that is not in the Linux kernel, always try to find a version that works with DKMS, because if you don't, every time you have a kernel update, chances are your hardware will not work anymore and you're gonna have to reinstall the driver manually every time. Now these kernel drivers are what lets your system communicate with the hardware and make it do stuff. Most of the time, it's enough, but for graphics drivers, there are some additional components. The drivers that let your GPU render things using various libraries like Vulkan, OpenGL, or stuff used for video decoding. These are generally called user space drivers, and they're mostly contained in the Mesa library for the open source side of things, which we talk about very often on this channel. So contrary to most other drivers, for graphics drivers, we generally have two components. We have one kernel driver, which lets the kernel know that this hardware exists and how to talk to it. And we have the user space drivers used for OpenGL, Vulkan, OpenCL, video decoding, and generally also used to make X11 and Wayland work correctly. So let's start with the most complicated, NVIDIA. NVIDIA GPUs out of the box are handled on most distros by the open source Nouveau driver. Nouveau is French for new, and it's a combination of multiple parts. It has a kernel driver to talk to the GPU, drivers to handle 3D rendering and OpenGL, and a driver for x.org slash Wayland. It's a reverse engineering project, meaning that they had to recreate all the code from trial and error with the proprietary NVIDIA drivers and what little documentation they could find. This means that for older NVIDIA GPUs, it will work fine or even really well. But for newer cards like the GTX 1000 series or any RTX series card, it is just not up to snuff. And it can basically just provide a display output with minimal 3D acceleration. 
Now to be noted, these open source Nuvo drivers recently got a very important feature that lets them use the signed firmware that Nvidia provides, meaning that all cards can now be reclocked. You can change the clock speed of the GPU, meaning that you can theoretically reach normal performance levels with these if the driver was written for that, which it isn't right now. Now, working on top of the Nuvo kernel driver is a brand new open source Vulkan driver called NVK. This thing is part of Mesa as our all open source user space graphics drivers, and it uses Nuvo to talk to the hardware, but it provides much better performance using Vulkan. It's really, really new and has just been added to Mesa. And for now, the performance is lower than the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, but it's been moving very fast recently and can actually beat the proprietary drivers in certain tests. So there is hope that it will become solid enough to be used by everyone in the near future. Now, for now, NVK is not the default on any distro that I know of. It probably won't become that for a long, long while. But there is hope that at some point, Nuvo plus NVK will become the fully open source stack that most distributions will rely upon. Now, NVIDIA themselves do release an open source kernel module for their GPUs, compatible with most of the cards that they make or made in the past. Unfortunately, this driver isn't quite there yet, and its code architecture just is not compatible with the Linux kernel, which is why efforts like Nuvo and NVK are a safer bet. Still, this code is useful to better understand how NVIDIA GPUs work, and who knows, maybe at some point, this official open source driver will be refactored and will make it into the kernel itself. Basically, with this one, don't use it. Chances are it's not going to work at all, even if you try to compile it. Nuvo and NVK are a much safer bet if you want to wait for open source to catch up for NVIDIA. Which leads us to the final NVIDIA-related driver, the proprietary driver from NVIDIA. This thing is obviously not open source, and it is distributed by NVIDIA directly, although many distributions package it themselves. And I cannot stress this enough. Do not install this driver from NVIDIA's website manually. Use the packages your distribution provides. Distro package this driver for a reason. It is complicated. And using your distro package will always be easier. It will be more stable and it will break less than a manual install. Now, this proprietary driver is basically a binary blob that has a kernel module, which needs to be recompiled with each kernel update, and it also contains the user space drivers you need for 3D rendering using OpenGL, Vulkan, and more. And also what you need to work with x.org and Wayland. It's an all-in-one package. If you have a semi-recent NVIDIA GPU, like a GTX 1000 or an RTX, that's the driver you want to use right now. And while it is not perfect, the latest version, 545, is solid enough even for use with Wayland. This is the driver I use to power my hybrid graphics Intel plus NVIDIA laptop that I use to make all these videos, render everything, play most of the games that I play. It works, it really does work, even on Wayland. But some distributions do not package it correctly, some users install it incorrectly from NVIDIA's website, and so it has a very, very bad reputation that still sticks to it. And for older GPUs, you will probably be better served by the Nuvo drivers that will have faster performance. Now, important to note, only those proprietary drivers will give you access to CUDA, which is something that you might need depending on what you do on your GPU. So that's it for NVIDIA. Unless you have a very old NVIDIA GPU, you do need to use right now the proprietary NVIDIA driver. But there is some good hope with Nuvo and NVK that before the end of 2024, you might be able to get really decent performance without having to install anything else and without all the little issues that the proprietary driver has. Now let's move on to AMD. The kernel driver for AMD GPUs is called, well, AMD GPU. It is open source and that's what handles the GPU itself, like powering it on, changing the clock speed and stuff like that. If you use any Linux distro on AMD hardware, you are using this out of the box. It's really solid. You don't need to do anything. On top of that, you get the Radeon SI and RADV drivers, which are the user space components. So all the libraries to use OpenGL and Vulkan. This is part of Mesa and it needs the AMD GPU kernel driver to work. 
And you do have two optional open source components as well, AMD VLK and ROCM. AMD VLK is a new Vulkan driver for Linux. It's based on the code of AMD's proprietary driver, which we'll talk about in a moment. The second optional component is ROCM. That's a library to let you use OpenCL and HIP on the open source AMD GPU driver. Not everyone will need any or both of these and generally for AMD cards, you don't need to do anything. You slot the card in your computer or you buy it with it pre-installed and you install your distro and all the drivers are already there. You don't need to look for drivers or anything. Everything is already in there and it works really, really well. But AMD does provide a proprietary driver called AMD GPU Pro. It uses the AMD GPU kernel driver as the base, but it replaces Radeon SI and RADV as the user space component to support Vulkan, OpenGL, OpenCL and more. It is meant either for LTS distro users that would never get updates to Mesa, for example, or for people using workstations or people depending on OpenCL, because the ROCM open source implementation we just talked about will not work with everything, notably, for example, with DaVinci Resolve. Now, this AMD proprietary driver does not have great performance compared to the open source drivers. So only use it if you use a workstation and you do compute tasks that aren't supported by the open source stack. For most use cases for AMD, don't bother. You don't have to do anything. You install your distro, you have the Mesa drivers and the kernel drivers in every single distro out there, and it's gonna work perfectly. Now, as per Intel, things are a bit weird. First, you have the i915 driver. This is what handles all integrated GPUs from Intel as the kernel driver. On top of that is i965, which is the user space component with a terrible name. It implements OpenGL and that's bundled with Mesa as well. And on top of that, you have ANV, which is the Vulkan driver for Intel GPUs, which is also part of Mesa. So that's the basics. For Intel cards, you generally don't need to do anything. Everything is in the Mesa drivers or in the Linux kernel and support is pretty good. You don't have to do anything, whatever the graphics card you have from Intel. Intel though is also working on a new driver specifically for XE graphics. It aims to replace the kernel driver called i915 with the user space bits remaining as they are with i965 for OpenGL and ANV for Vulkan. This new XE driver hasn't been merged yet. It's apparently not ready, but we should probably see it in 2024. So for Intel, it's just like with AMD. You have nothing to do. Everything is in the Linux kernel or in the Mesa drivers or in both. So your distro provides that out of the box. The only thing you might want is a newer version of these drivers if you use an old distro. And in that case, you just use a more recent distro. So it looks like a mess from the outside and it's definitely messier than on Windows where you would go to the website of the manufacturer, click download and install that and you're done. Here you have everything that is provided out of the box by your distribution. You have nothing specific to do and for Nvidia GPUs, you probably want to install the proprietary drivers, which you can do in just one click from any good distros package repository. So it's very, very easy to handle. All you have to remember is that there is a kernel driver that talks to the hardware and a user space driver that's used to actually interact with the graphics APIs like OpenGL, OpenCL, Vulkan, like rendering your games, your windows and everything like that. So this will be it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you watch this, hopefully, let me know down there in the comments. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments as well. If I misunderstood something, let me know in the comments as well. And in the meantime, I'll let you know about our sponsor. Since we're talking about graphics and hardware, we just have to talk about Tuxedo, our sponsor. They're a Linux hardware manufacturer. They make laptops, desktops, and NUX that ship with Linux out of the box. All the hardware has been picked specifically because it all runs well with Linux. They actually submit patches upstream to fix the various problems that they mount and counter. They have devices with Intel, Nvidia, AMD, whatever you want, all power level, all price points. You can customize all devices with a large variety of hardware. You can have your own custom logo on the lid of your laptop, your own custom keyboard layout. You can open all the laptops, repair them and upgrade them. It's a really good choice. Tuxedo Computers is all I use these days to run my channel, 
or to play games with my SteamOS console. So check them out in the link in the description below and get yourself a computer that actually supports Linux. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications and to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, there's always that thumbs down button and the comment section as well. And if you want to support the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that from Patreon, LibraPay, PayPal, YouTube memberships, whatever, you know how all of this works and you can get a bunch of perks in the meantime as well. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.